Nicholas Jackson, nine-year contract extension, talking points from Chelsea 1, Crystal Palace 1, and final transfer rumours on departing players, as well as the latest transfer and just news updates surrounding Chelsea FC. So if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel, like the video, please, and comment your thoughts on all of the stories that we're going to talk about in today's Chelsea news video. So starting off, we'll start off with Nicholas Jackson. He scored a goal. Yeah, he did score a goal yesterday. Good little tap in, had a high XG value, so he was expected to score. But it was he's got to be in the right place at the right time. Good movement from Jackson to get into the position for Cole Palmer to find him. However, he did spurn a late one-on-one -on -one chance against Dean Henderson at the end of the game, which could have won it. And you just got to think, if we signed a Victor Ozerman or an Ivan Tony, would they have scored there? Probably. Um, but Chelsea are, haven't officially announced it, but it's pretty much confirmed from many journalists that we've offered them a contract extension to 2033, holding him down for another nine years. I don't think he's one of these elite talents. Like, we've got Cole Palmer in the team. Um, Kai Sado, one of these high investments. Wesley Fofana, Levi Cobble that do deserve long contracts. But, I mean, I guess it shows that he's going to be there for the long term. I think maybe they were trying to make him feel better because we were so linked with a new striker. Maybe they're saying, look, I know we we're linked with a new striker, but you are our current striker and we do believe in you. Because apparently the di sport directors do believe in him. They don't want to stunt his growth by buying another striker and playing them every single game. And they, they believe in Jackson for the future of Chelsea. So, talking points from Chelsea 1, Crystal Palace 1. We'll be very quick with this. With this, it was a good performance overall. Created over two expected goals. Limited Crystal Palace to less than half an expected goal. But it was a great goal from Eber Richard Eze. They performed well in the day. They, the back three with the two midfielders dropping deep and the wing backs dropping in. It's so difficult to break down. And it's the same problem we had last year, hard to break down, but we did create good chances. We just weren't clinical enough. The first half was a lot better than the second half. And I think Noni Madueke had two very good chances. It was a great save from one for Dean Henderson, but the other one where it slid past the post, I think he should be doing better, especially for his high standards. And I mean, on another day, we win that game. Two expected goals. We created the better chances. It's, it's tough to get excited about, but... We didn't win the game. We're in 11th place in the Premier League. And now we go into the international break. And it, we're not ending on the high that it probably should have been. Um, like I said, Jackson missed a chance at the end. But everyone played well. I think uh, the two centre-backs, Colwell and Fafana, played really well. They're going to be the long-term centre-back partnership at Chelsea. And they're showing why. Because yesterday against Palace, they were both really good. I thought Kukure and Gusto weren't amazing. Caicedo was good. Different role dropping deep. Enzo was all right. Palmer running the show. I'm going to have to bring him into my FPL team. And then Neto was a bit disappointing, actually. Pedro Neto, a bit disappointing. But it's a new team. They're going to get better every, every time we play. And a lot of the first team will be going on the international break. So the second team that lost against Serviette, the Napkin, uh, in, in the Conference League, they'll probably be staying back because they're not as good. So they didn't get picked for their countries. So they'll be doing more drills with Moresca and hopefully we'll be winning against Shamrock Rovers and Noah in the Conference League with that team. We're trying to get smoother with that. So now I'm just going to do a quick little roundup. Omari Kellyman, 19 million pound transfer from Aston Villa. Highly, um, what's the word? Highly expected to have a good future in the future. He's like 18. Uh, I think it was an inflated value because they signed uh, Ian Matson for an inflated value. But he's going to be with a development team this season. He didn't get a loan. Uh, but he has confirmed himself that he's going to be out with a long-term injury. Um, he put it on his Instagram story. But then it's come out, it's only two months. So that is long-term. It's not what we want. But it's not like an ACL, which can see you out for a year. Like Wesley Fofana, who we'll move on to now. He was picked for the France international team. Not for the first time, but he's been recalled after his injuries. I don't really know why he hadn't performed amazingly until that Palace game, really. But he has withdrawn from the France team uh, to follow a protocol because he is still coming back from injury and Chelsea wants to continue the rehabilitation um, closely with him rather than let him go out to France and maybe get injured in training. Uh, so he will not be going with the France team, but it's good to see that he was picked on paper and hopefully maybe next international break he will fly out with the France team. It's, he's probably a bit disappointed, but... Um, 
that he's got such a long future ahead of him. He's going to be playing for France in the future if he can get up to his uh, potential, which is high, high ceiling. Flamengo, Brazilian team, are trying to complete a loan deal for uh, David Washington. I think he should be playing in Europe. I think a loan to Portugal would make sense. I'm pretty sure the window is still open, um, but apparently not. He speaks Portuguese. He played for Santos and was uh, oh no, that was Angelo. I can't remember who David Washington played for, but I mean, he was one of these highly rated Brazilian youngsters and loaning him back to Flamengo. I think he does need to play football and professional football, not development squad football. So I think just loan him out, whatever. Um, next. Oh, we're nearly done, actually. So a a AEK Athens sporting director was at the bridge yesterday for the Crystal Palace game to discuss a potential loan or transfer. I think it will more be a transfer move for David Dutcher for Farney, who was on loan at Burnley last season. There's rumours he could be going to Leicester, but they got odds on Edward in the end, and the transfer window is shut for Leicester. Dutcher for Farney was a weird signing. We signed him from Norwegian team Mould. And, um, yeah, he's barely played a game for Chelsea. He was Ivorian, so people were making the links to Didier Drogba, but... It's been a weird transfer. He's not really ever been given a chance. And now if we sell him permanently, I mean, maybe we'll get a little bit of profit. We signed him for £12 million, I think. Sell him for like 16 But what is the point of that at the end of the day? Slightly questionable by the sporting directors. But finally, I think this is the final talking point. The main one. This could be a big profit. Now, people have questions. The sporting directors signing so many young players. Cesare Cassidy spoke about David Washington, Fofana, and we've got more coming. Next next summer, we've got um, Kendry Pires and Esteval Willian, who scored another goal at Sol for uh, Palmeiras last night or this morning. Check that out if you haven't already. But Angelo was one of these other ones, the Brazilian youngsters, signed him at the age of like 17, and when he turned 18, he, or maybe he was 18, and just joined up with the squad, Pochettino's team. And he looked pretty good in preseason under Pochettino, went on to Strasbourg, he statistically performed really well. He created a lot of chances in the little minutes he played. But he, I thought he may have a chance at being Madueke's back up for the right wing. But then we signed Pedro Neto and then Jaden Sancho as well. We've got a lot of depth there and we don't need him in the first team. I think maybe another loan. But Al Nasser, the Saudi Giants, Cristiano Ronaldo's team, have a bid, they bid 25 million euros. And I think Chelsea signed him for about 16, 17 million euros. So, uh, or million pounds, actually. So, we rejected the first bid of 25 million pounds. And then they upped it to 30 million euros. Sorry, 25 million euros we rejected, which was their first bid. Uh, then they upped it to 30 million euros. And we rejected that as well. We're apparently holding up for 40 million euros. Now, they may turn their attention away. Because 40 million euros for a young Brazilian is a lot. And although the Saudi teams do have huge amounts of money... It's not unlimited and they do have budgets. But I don't know what the plan is with Angelo if we don't sell him. I guess loan him. Get... We're putting a lot of trust on the sporting directors to sort out these youngsters' futures. Kanye Chukwameka is another one that he was linked to moves away on loan and permanent. And then transfer deadline day came about and there was nothing. And it just ended and he's gone. Oh, he's not gone, sorry. But he wasn't in the squad for yesterday. Neither was Mark Yu, interestingly. Uh, but I think he was in and around the bridge, whereas Carney's not been pictured for a while. Though I do think he trains. He's in those training videos. Um, so yeah, if we could get 40 million euros, which is about 35 million pounds for this Angelo, who we signed um, one year ago. So Yeah, one year ago. That's a, That does make sense. I can sort of see the vision. They're saying if they're elite players that will improve the first team, then great. We'll play them. Like, hopefully, Kendry Pires and Esteval got huge, huge fans in Brazil and Ecuador. Um, but if they're great, but they're not good enough Chelsea, then we could sell them for profit. Because 10 to 20 million pounds isn't as much, isn't so high risk. So if we could sign him for 20 million pounds and sell him for 40 million euros a year later, then that is good on the books. We can afford other players like Jaden Sancho that way because the profit in between is sort of what we're going to have to pay for Sancho. And yeah, it, it, it's, it makes sense. It sounds good. And actually, I did. I wanted to name every single player that's come and gone to Chelsea this summer. So let me know what you think about all those um, 
stories we've spoken about but then i wanted to just list off the names that have come and gone do you think this transfer window was a positive a success or not so overall income we got 175 million euros from sales that is a lot expenditure we paid 238.5 million euros we expended on 28 arrivals and 23 departures an overall balance net loss of 63.5 million pounds or oh, euro sorry <laughs> i use pounds not me so it's players we signed pedro neto for 60 million euros Jao felix for 52 million euros kenny drewsbury hall for 35.4 million euros philip jorgensen for 24.5 million euros mike penders for 20 million euros but he's gone back on loan to to genk Aaron Anselmino for 16.5 million euros. He's gone back on loan to Boca. Renato Vega for 14 million euros, looking like a bargain already. Caleb Wiley for 10 million euros, but has gone on loan to sister team Strasbourg. Mark Hugu for 6 million euros could be one day a huge, huge, huge coup um, for Chelsea. And then Tosin on a free transfer. Jane Sancho on a loan transfer with an obligation to buy of 25 million pounds. Um, and then it goes into the outgoings. Bashir Humphreys left to Burnley on a loan to buy obligation, I think, but we'll worry about the finances next year. Tino Andrin has gone to Empoli, but there was no uh, talk of the fee in the end, but I think we have a 50% sell-on clause. Eddie Beach on loan to Crawley. Ian Matson went on loan to um, Aston Villa for, or no, he went permanently for 44.5 million euros. Conor Gallagher went permanently to Atletico Madrid, 42 million euros, and those two are huge um, pure profit sales. Same with Lewis Hall for 33 million euros. Romelu Lukaku for 30 million euros. Apparently is one of our biggest sales that isn't a academy product uh, in the last five years. Amari Hutchinson for 23.5 million euros. Diego Moreira for 2 million euros for Strasbourg, our sister club. And the rest are frees and loans. I'll quickly list them. Ziyech for free. The Galatasaray Malangsar for free. Lens, Thiago Silva for free to Fluminense. Uh, Raheem Sterling on loan to Arsenal. Ugo Chukwu on loan to Southampton. Broder on loan to Everton. Petrovic on loan to Strasbourg. Chalabar on loan to Crystal to Palace. Kepa on loan to Bournemouth. Alfred Gilchrist on loan to Sheffield United. Um, Gabriel Stalinina on loan to Barnsley. And that is everyone. It's Antomino, Penders, Beach. Um, why we all spoke about already. Do you think that's a successful window? I think the main talking point is that we didn't sign a big striker but and um, we're gonna have to put all our trust into nicholas jackson and mark gu but let me know what you think subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thank you very much for watching comment your thoughts and goodbye